Good morning, friends. Today, again, I am live in my Facebook with the topic after Blenheim. It is the second class on this poem. This poem is meant for ICSC examination for nine and ten, and it is a part of our. It, it is contained in our uh, English literature book, Treasure Trove. So that is an introduction that I have already told you yesterday, and it is in the continuation of that introduction. Today is the second class. Let me have some recap of what what I have said yesterday. After Blenheim. After Blenheim. Blenheim is a place. Blenheim is a place. It is in Germany. It is in Germany. In Germany, in German language, it is it is spelled as Blen. Blind hem, B L I N D H E I M. Blind hem. In English, it is blind hem, P L E M H E I N M. And in in German, it is blind hem, B L I N D H E I M. It is in the state of, it is in the province of Bavaria, of west of of Germany. Okay, and it is near the city, the near the town city. Dunau Wart, Dunau Wart, Dunau Wart, D A N A U, O W O R T, Dunau Wart, and it is, and this uh, blind hem is 10 miles and 16 kilometers away of in, in the southern west of uh, Dunau Wart. So Dunau Wart is a township. Bavaria is the state. The country is Germany, and the place is blind hem. It is situated beside the river Danube, D D A N U E E, the Danube River. So uh, it is named after the uh, name of the township. Okay, so this is the place, Blenheim. Now the topic is after Blenheim. So what? After Blenheim. Has the that particular place been extinct? Has it been extinct? It is that the after money when Blenheim is no more with us. No, that is not. The concept is that uh, issue is that after Blenheim refers to the effect of something that happened in Blenheim. And the effect that thing afterwards. What is the thing? It was just come, uh, we should go back to the history. In history, in European history, a very, very renowned event is the war of Spanish, Spanish succession. The war of Spanish succession. Spanish succession, what does it mean? Spain, you have heard the name of Spain, you have heard the name of Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, and many other beautiful, uh, renowned name in the arena of football. So, this Spain in 1700 and before, in 1700 after death, after AD, and before, the Spanish Empire was a, was a very, very uh, first umpire, very very first. It was not only the Spain, it also it also included the many parts of the Europe and some parts of America too that I have already told you. Then the king, the the king of Spain, Charles II, died in the year in 1700. In 1700, sorry, in 1701. And the fight and the man left no succession. He had no child. So who would be the king afterwards? After the Amani? as a result of that, who will succeed the throne? There was a fight. At that time, the, uh, another 
another very strong power of Europe was another strong power of Europe was France. France started to be to make itself involved in the process and many other countries which were under the arena of Spanish Empire they tried to everybody tried to be the had to have the chance to be the king of that very very important empire and that the fight there developed fight a great fight and the participants and the involvement in involving countries are divided into two parts one was given the leadership by France and the other one is Bavaria. These are the two important countries, and there are some there are some countries of the world uh, which help them, but they are very few in number. The prominent prominent country is was France and Bavaria, and they were countered by England, but England alone was not in a position to outweigh the power of the France. So. The other interested groups, that is the, some, the Netherlands, that is Dutch, Austria, and some other, uh, some other states involved in the process. And they, prom, they formed a group that is known as Grand Alliance. Grand Alliance. So the two groups developed. One is Grand Alliance, headed by England, led by England, and another is uh, Franco Bavarian group led by France. And these two groups involved in a huge number of battles. Battle do you know? A particular war. So a particular war, a part, sorry, a particular fight. A particular fight. The fight at a particular place, fight, fight, fight of a particular area in a particular area, brigade as, as fight, battle. And a conglomeration of good number of battles is known as where that I have already told you. So where is the con uh, a bunch, you know, the, the bunch of flowers. The bunch of flowers is very, very near the world. And a particular flower is the battle. Okay. So battle is a particular fighting. And where is a uh, conglomeration of all the fight, uh, all the fightings, all, all the battles which uh, which were uh, which are fought for a particular reason or one or more objectives. Okay. Now this Spanish succession war of Spanish succession was carried on for, for two years. From seventeen hundred one to seventeen hundred and fourteen. And a part of that where it was a part of that where a part of that where was fought in Blenheim. And that is why this fighting is known as Battle of Blenheim. The Battle of Blen Blenheim took place in the 13th day of August 1704. The Battle of Blenheim was fought on 13th of August 1704. Between the two groups, one comes and the other is the England, English uh, counterpart. France was leaded by the Duke of Tellard, Duke of Tellard, Count of Marcin and Maximilian. And the Marshal or the total team was leaded by Marshal Camille of France. And in case of England, it was leaded by Duke of Marlborough. Duke of Marlborough and the other emperor, the Prince Eugene, E G E U G E N E, as you like to spell and pronounce. So that is the story. That is the battle, and the battle was fought severely, and the result of the battle went in favor of the Great Alliance. That is in favor of the English, and. Duke of Marlborough and Prince uh, Prince Egoi outwit the French army led by Marcel Camille. Clear? 
So that is the point. Now, uh, that is the history we have. Okay. Now come to the main part. After Blenheim, after sorry, after Blenheim, after Blenheim, what does it mean? What does it suggest? After after Blenheim, that means it is not the where is not with and about with and about the where the war was there. Who fought? Huh? How many soldiers fought each other? What was the results? What was, what was the who was the how many persons died? Not all these things. It is a historical part. I have given a glimpse of the history only for your understanding. Now we have we have to have our discussion uh, resting on our literary aspects, okay? And the thoughts behind the perception behind perception of the writer behind. Now after Blenheim means what does it mean? There was a battle in Blenheim, and it was the post war period, post battle period, post battle, post battle period is basically known as after. Okay, the pre-battle means battle before the battle, and post battle is after the battle. But after Blenheim again is not. So after uh, a post, post battle scenario, what it would be? Post battle scenario will be the effects of the battle. Okay, that it will be it basically uh, post post battle period. If if the poem would have been consulted with post battle period, it would have uh, given the list of the uh, list of the damages, the effects, the total effects of the uh, outcome effects of the outcome of their fighting. Okay, there is the uh, total effects of the fighting. So it was again not that. It was again not that. The poet has not considered how many persons died, how many, uh, what, who were benefited, who were the losers, uh, what was the ultimate results of the plan. The poet has not at all considered that those aspects. Then what is that? The poet has tried to, tried to stress, he, he has tried to stress the conception, the conception regarding war, regarding, regarding, sorry, regarding the battle. The poet has started, and the poet uh, tried to stress out what the conceptions regarding the battle. Of the rain, of the rain, of the rain. What did the layman, layman think? What did the layman think with regards to the battle? It is not about the battle. It is not about the effects of the battle. It is about the thoughts of the, you know, the layman concepts of the battle. Now he has depicted, and in the poet has tried to depict, uh, depict his own conception. He was a, he is basically an anti war poet. The poem is, I have already told you that day, poem is Robert Saudi. Robert Saudi is a romantic poem. And here he is, he has tried to, tried to show, he has tried to give some message and his perception with regards to the war. What is that? What he has done? He has taken the three characters thus far. Wilhelmine, Wilhelmine, and Peter King. Right? Peter King? Peter King. So he has chosen, he has chosen three characters. This is the start of the, this is the start of the uh, story. He has chosen three characters. So a, you may call it a dramatic character. It's, these are the characters. And the characters are appearing. The characters are appearing. Give me the one book. The red one. The point. Now, these are the three characters. The, the conversations, the conversations among these three, tracing out. 
the effect of the if the effect of uh, our this old view. Tetakal, Tetakal, and Kaspar is an old man. Where am I? And that old man is Baba Ili. He has got two children, grandchildren. One is Where am I? The granddaughter. And Peter King, a big uh, elder to her, and the grandson. Mr. Casper is sitting in front of his cottage after the day's work. It is a summer evening. It is a summer evening. Old Casper sitting in front after the day's work. He is sitting in front of the cottage and in the in the in, in front of the cottage there is a uh, place of grasses that is a meadow and well and mine well and mine is playing over here and then comes then Peter, Peter, Peter King is seen at a distance coming towards them with a, with something rolling with something rotating, with, some, with something moving. The material is a smooth round one. So that is the that is the start of the point. Okay. Now, now I am coming to the line by line explanation of this point. It, it was somewhere it was a summer evening old Casper's work was done and before his cottage door was sitting in the sun and by him spotted on the green his little grandchild will mind okay it was a summer evening old Casper's work was done and, he, and before his cottage door was sitting in the sun. So dawn and sun it's arriving, okay? And by him spotted in the green his little grandchild will and mine. So it is a summer evening. I've only told you it's a summer evening. Old Casper work was done. It was a summer evening, old Casper's work was done. What was done refers to the, his day's work. It means we have already got it that the man is a rustic fellow, he is residing in a cottage, or he is residing in a village, and I have already told you it's a story of a village, Blenheim was a village at that time, so in the village the rustic fellows are concerned with cultivation, so in concern with their uh, production of corns and, and uh, vegetables and others, so he had to work a lot all through the day, and after the day's work, being tired, he is sitting in front of the in front of this cottage, okay, cottage door. The sun is very upset that there is still again. So it is the latter part of the uh, afternoon, okay. So it is the latter part, or uh, it's a nearly the before the advent of evening, okay. So old Casper's days, what, what was done, and he before his cottage door was sitting in the sun, and by him spotted on the green, spotted means. But in plain, okay, the in sports. Uh, in the green, in the green means the green uh, land, okay. There is a meadow, meadow, and his little grandchild will and mine. So when he was sitting in, at a particular place in front of his cottage too, and in front of the cottage there is a grassland, meadow, and in the meadow, uh, his little grand uh, grandchild, uh, yeah, daughter, and will and mine. Uh, was playing, but if you maintain the uh, present tense, maintain the uh, is, uh, is playing. Okay. She saw her brother Peter King roll something large and round, which beside the review lake in playing there had found. He saw her brother uh, that was so large and smooth and round, that was so large and smooth and round. She was, she saw her brother. Who saw? Well mind. So if Well mind saw, his, her brother Peter King 
roll something round and round. Roll means uh, moving down or rotating. Okay. Which he besides the which he besides the rivulet. What is the meaning of rivulet? Okay. You should look down. Rivulet. You know the term book? I think you know the term book. You know the term man? Yeah, he is a man here. Okay. You know the term river? Rivulet. Let refers to the mini composition, mini the state of something. Let. When let is used as a suffix, let is like a man and let book, booklet. Booklet means small. In Bengali it is called book means pustak. Uh, uh, book, booklet means pustika. That is in, uh, small in size, uh, low in volume, very low in volume. So again, the man, manlet. Manlet is mannequin. So man, really puts his to those who, uh, those who are regarded really good, they have the manlet. So river, you know, the flow of water. Huh? And the rivulet is a small river. Yeah, a stream. Rivulet is a stream. Stream. Basically, rivulet is a uh, is a very small flow of small flow of water emanating out of any any original or any bigger water flows. Okay, I have already told you that the Blenheim is situated the village Blenheim was situated at that time in the river beside the river Danube and it is still that Danube. D A N U B Danube. So I think from that river a stream might have come out. Okay, it might have come out, and that stream is regarded as the uh, river. Okay, the stream is regarded as the river. I think so this is a round, smooth, material object. He came to ask what he had found. He came. What was he? He refers to Peter Finn. Uh, he came to ask. He, uh, he had the curiosity. He had the curiosity. He had not, he was a, uh, a little one. He had not seen ever uh, so far his tiny life uh, that uh, this type of object. Okay, the round object, smooth in smooth and round. So he came. Who came to him? He came to Caspar for asking what the thing is. So she was, she saw her brother, Peter King. She refers to here, where am I? So, just if you are asked to um, just uh, place this poem, uh, this stanza in some prosal form, the prosal form, or uh, that is the paraphrase, so what if you should, you should uh, say? Well, I mind while playing in front of the cottage, in front of that cottage in the meadow, she saw, she saw her brother, Petrakin is, is approaching towards them. Uh, rolling something which is which was move uh, around and, and smooth he he came over there and appeared to be very very excited uh, what for excitement the excitement was uh, because the thing was not known to him he wanted to ask what the thing was what the thing had been okay now the third stage Old Caspar took it from the boy who stood expectant by, and then the old man shook his head and with a natural sigh, tis some poor fellow skull, said he, who fell in the great, great victory. Old Caspar took it from the boy. It, it refers to the skull. Why don't you put uh, not disturb? I put in the. Is it the bajan? The old Casper took it from the boy. Took it from the boy. 
who stood expectant. What is the meaning of expectant? Expecting a reply. Expecting, expecting, eager, expecting a reply. The boy, the boy was excited. He was highly excited. He, was, he, had, he had not seen such a thing before. So he, he, he wanted no, to know what the thing was. He wanted to know what the thing was. So he was very eager to know uh, from, uh, the, from, the, uh, from this old, you know, his uh, dear old man, what the thing is. Well, he was expecting a reply. Okay. And then the old man shook his hand. Shook means moving. Okay, shook his hand in that way, shook his hand, and with a natural sigh. Sigh means a deep breath, a deep breath. Okay, exhaling. Hmm? Deep breath, exhaling. Okay, and it was some pose that he. What is this? It is like this, it is. It is. Some poor fellow skull, some poor fellow, some poor fellow skull. Skull, everybody know. Huh? As I said, he who fell in the gate with his poor fellow. Poor fellow means he was, he was not rich, not that. He was he, huh? some fatless fellow, the man who were unfortunately, the man, the man who unfortunately died in the battlefield, okay? Who fell in the great victory. Now, the man is telling that it is the car. so um, Kaspar, the boy came to him with a the man the boy came to him with a great eagerness in an excited mind uh, to ask the man uh, grandfather what it is what it is if you know I have not seen it quickly tell you know, uh, your knowledge with respect to this uh, what it is uh, old man the old man says he he went through the object and says that it is nothing it is nothing but a skull of a soldier who had died in the in the field what is the field that is the field of battle 